Thank you very much, Chair. I will refer to you as Chair, not knowing whether you're a professor or doc. Oh, so okay. Was, I see. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. I didn't even mention my name, but I'm sure you've seen it on the... <laughs> yeah. Uh, my name is Derek Wadia. Um, from the School of uh, Natural Sciences. I'm presenting on a topic fraud detection in mobile banking based on artificial intelligence with a baseline study on theory of reason action in mobile banking adoption. My name is Derek Wadia, supervised by Professor Jackson Pikiri, like I mentioned, from the School of Natural Sciences. Um, that's the format of the presentation for this afternoon chair. I move to the background. I'll be cruising because of the number of slides that I have. So following the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, digital banking services has transformed from being an inconvenience to being a necessity. Mobile banking, as a definition, is the use of mobile gadgets to conduct financial transactions. According to the Bank of Zambia 2020 annual payment systems in Zambia report, the national financial switch recorded an increase of 1% in volume and 67% in value of the transactions processed. However, this substantial increase in the volume of mobile banking transactions has had a corresponding increase in the fraud cases recorded in millions of dollars and quacha every year by banks and financial institutions. When you look at the Association of Fraud Examiners, they define fraud as an, an intentional or deliberate act of depriving another property or money by caning, deception, or other unfair acts. Fraud in its nature has diverse effects, which include reducing industry confidence, destabilizing customer savings, and affects the cost of living for the affected customers. What's the problem statement? Most financial institutions use the rule-based systems to detect fraud based on predefined rules and give alerts when certain conditions are met. You realize, Chair, that those uh, rule-based systems are time-intensive, they identify obvious frauds which have been experienced in the past and they are rigid and not adaptable. Chair, this study applies machine learning and artificial intelligence or, or, or algorithms to detect fraud the study looked into the factors that influence the adoption of mobile banking by bank customers. What is the aim of our study is to develop, is to evaluate the extent to which machine learning and artificial intelligence models can be applied to discover hidden patterns in data and detect fraudulent mobile banking transactions. The objectives, the first one is to undertake a baseline study to validate and generate a model of behavior towards mobile banking in Zambia and determine the factors that influence individuals' intention to use mobile banking based on their modified theory of reasoned action. To develop a model for fraud detection in banking based on uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence. And lastly, to build a prototype for fraud detection based on the model in the above objective two. What are the research questions? The first research question speaks into the factors that influence an individual's intention to use mobile banking in Zambia. Secondly, what data mining and artificial intelligence tools can we apply to uncover hidden patterns in mobile banking transactions? The third question is how can we develop a prototype based on the model above that can detect mobile banking transaction frauds or anomalies, put it in another way. What is the significance of this study? The baseline study will extend the body of knowledge and understanding regarding the user acceptance of mobile banking information systems. Then the results of the study on fraud detection in mobile banking added to the body of knowledge published as a book chapter in Springer Conference, page 537-554. Chair, that is the publication which was done as part of this study. The literature review, we looked at the various literature regarding the fraud detection in the uh, banking sector and other sectors. I won't go into detail due to lack of time. The second slide talks about the factors that influence the adoption of mobile banking uh, based on the theory of uh, reasoned action and other social psychological theories of technology acceptance. 
what is our theoretical framework? To begin with, TRA, which is the theory of reasoned action, predicts that behavior is directly determined by an individual's intention to engage in the behavior. Intention itself, which is one of the constructs of TRA, is directly predicted by an individual's attitudes towards that behavior and the subjective norms. The theory of reasoned action includes four components, that's the attitude, subjective norms, intentions, and behavior, as well as the relationship between those constructs. There are several other social psycho uh, psychological adoption models that explain the factors that influence the adoption and use of technologies. And these are the theory of planned behavior, the innovation diffusion theory, and also the technology acceptance theory. Conceptual framework. The theory of reasoned action suggests that a person's behavior is determined by their intention to perform the behavior and that this intent is a function of their attitude towards the behavior. Chair, just to cut on them, the diagram on the right there just uh, gives us an insight of the theory of reasoned action. We see here attitude influencing the behavior intention, also the subjective norms uh, influencing the behavior intention, which in turn is influencing the behavior. In this study chair, we have got independent variables, which are the attitude and the subjective norms, and then we have got the dependent variables, which are the behavioral intentions and the behavior itself. The research design matrix, uh, there I'm speaking into the objectives, the research questions, and the methods that were used to carry out this design. For lack of time, Chair, I'll move to the next slide. When I come to the baseline study design, which is the, uh, it, we, we use primary data obtained through questionnaire approach. The study population, we looked at 1,000 retail bank customers. The sample size was 286 retail customers. We employed the Slovene approach there. I've indicated the Slovene approach that helps us to calculate the sample size. And the hypothesis for this uh, baseline study, the first hypothesis, we are seeing that attitude towards mobile banking positively affects the intention to use the technology. Hypothesis two, subjective norm positively affects the intention to use mobile banking. Hypothesis three, intention to use mobile banking affects the actual use of mobile banking. And number four, intention is a mediating effect in the relationship between subjective norm and the actual use of the technology. The research instrument for the baseline data was collected through the questionnaires. The study employed a statistical package for social sciences, SPSS for conducting descriptive analysis, and also such things as exploratory factor analysis. We used EMOS for doing structural equation modeling and also start up for testing the hypothesis. The baseline study, like I said, data was collected through the questionnaire. We used the principal component analysis and to do the exploratory factor analysis using SPSS, we applied the structural equation modeling uh, to do the analysis, which required us to do the confirmatory factor analysis. And in the second stage of this, uh, SEM, we did an analysis that involved the estimation of the structure model, as well as the relationship between the latent variables. In the fraud detection uh, study design, this research, we employed the quantitative design methodology. The data that was used was secondary data, which was data obtained from a certain bank within the country of Zambia. The strategy involved the manipulation of pre-existing data using artificial intelligence and machine learning data mining computations. Chair on the right there, I just give the system design of how the interaction between the various components of the system are. The research instruments for the fraud detection, we use a school developer, we use Python and the Jupyter Notebook. On the right there, I just give a snippet of the output of the um, Jupyter Notebook as we were designing the system and the model. Fraud detection and data collection preparation, we applied the knowledge discovery in database process. The first step was to collect data from 
real historical mobile data transactions from a certain bank in Zambia for the period 1st January 2022 to 31st January 2022. The data set consisted of 310,362 observations. The second step chair there involved exploratory data analysis using machine learning, visual techniques to gain the in-depth understanding of the characteristics of the data, things like the attribute types and the relationship between the variables. The extracted data was highly dimensional, unstructured, and without labels. Therefore, we pre-processed the data to make it clean, varied, and consistent using the Python packages. And that pre-processing included the data cleaning, data transformation, the data coding, and data normalization, as well as applying the principal component analysis for dimensionality reduction. Like I had mentioned, we applied the KDD process, which is the fifth step in here, choosing the suitable data mining uh, task, which is unsupervised learning. We also applied the k-means clustering and isolation algorithm. In the second phase, we... So you have five minutes more. Okay, thank you, Chair. Running out of time. What are the findings, Chair? Based on the uh, baseline study, we have put the model coefficient outputs which are displayed on the diagram on my top right there. We have got the regression weights there, chair, down there, which shows the relationship between the behavior intention, BI just means the behavior intentions, SN is the subjective norms, and the AT is the attitude towards the, the, uh, the, this, uh, the use of mobile banking, the MB, basically just means that that is the mobile banking actual use. And you can see the relationship between those two. On the baseline study there, it's a demonstration of the hypothesis, trying to now validate the hypothesis that we came up with. Chair, as we can see here, when you look at the odds, the first hypothesis is talking about the odds of having the right attitude to use mobile banking is predicted to grow by 29 point. 6% when the intention is increased by one. The same applies to the odds of having the positive subjective norm towards mobile banking news increases by 23.5 when intention is increased by one. The hypothesis, the other one, I'll, I'll drop, I will skip them for the purpose of time. On the fraud detection uh, system, we employed the elbow method to give us the optimal number of clusters. The corresponding C quote coefficient of 0 0.2953. Chair down there, it gives us the output of that model. And on the right, this is just the elbow method giving us the output. On the second slide, we see chair that the results gave us cluster two, produced the highest number of anomalies, which is 52.52. And when you look at it from the product point of view, the product that a bank product that a person uses to transfer funds, we see that product 101, which is the NFS funds transfer, produced the highest number of anomalies across the products. Down there, we are displaying the uniform manif um, manifold approximation and projection output of the output. Where we see there are yellows, we see that those are the anomalies that the model predicted. And on the right, there is just the chart that gives us the output in terms of percentages. In terms of the prototype chair, we have put a GUI there that shows when this data now is fed into the system, the output, the end user who's able to interact with the system, this is the interface that gives them for them to be able to analyze the transactions and take the necessary actions. What is the discussion in this study? We have attempted to empirically test a research model based on the model of reasoned action using mobile banking as a target technology. As expected, the results have supported the theory proposition that individuals' behavior intention to use mobile banking is influenced by the attitude and subjective norms. On the data mining and fraud detection side, we uncovered significant hidden patterns from the mobile banking transaction data set and on the other side of developing the prototype, the system was able to give us an interface that allows the end users 
to interact with the system and be able to take the necessary action whenever a fraud is detected. What is the conclusion shows? The findings of the adapted TRA model showed the positive influence of attitude and subjective norms on behavioral intention to use mobile banking. The results also revealed the mediating effect of behavioral intention for the relationship between subjective norm and the mobile banking use. The research did not establish any relationship between effort expectance and perceived usefulness in relation to intention to use. Here, that is one of the uh, constructs that were adapted into the TRA model, but we did not find any correlation. And we developed a model capable of taking pre-processed mobile transactions input and perform fraud predictions with an accuracy of 5%. The research findings demonstrate that we can apply two unsupervised of learning algorithms to some data set to get insights and detect anomalies in the data. What are the recommendations? We recommend that the banks and mobile banking information system designer to better understand the banking system user needs in order to improve online banking services. We also recommend that banks adopt and supervise machine learning and data mining to uncover hidden parts and detect fraud in near real time, as opposed to the rule-based system. In terms of the references, those are the references that we are quoted in this uh, study. And acknowledgement, I acknowledge the dedication of Professor Jackson Peary as well as the entire faculty of the computer okay, science department. Thank you. Thank you. It's time up. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for your presentation. Yeah. And such interesting, especially with the issues to, uh, that when you know, something that people are experiencing is not uh, something theoretical, but it, things that we face in our day-to-day -day lives where sometimes people yeah do manipulate systems so as to get things from others in dubious means